Hi, I'm Matt from Haltech, and today on Technically Speaking, we're going to be looking at how to set up the anti-lag launch control. And to help us with that, we're going to be using the Gas Motorsports Racing BMW. Before we get into the technical side of the software, let's talk a little bit about what the two-step launch control is. Basically, what we want to do in a drag racing application is we want to build boost on the line. And the way to do that is by retarding the ignition timing, adding a little bit more fuel. And what that does is it allows the fuel to actually burn out the exhaust valve. As it's expanding, it runs through the turbocharger, which spins the turbocharger much faster than it would normally spin. And so you can build boost without actually moving the vehicle. So that's the idea. We want to build boost before we launch so that we can take off with all the power we have in the engine. All right, so that's a bit of an explanation of how the anti-lag works. Let's look at the software to see how to set it up. The first thing we need to do is go into the setup page in the advanced setup and turn on the anti-lag launch control. Once we've turned it on, we get a new tab here, which has got all our settings. Now, don't worry too much about the settings now because we also get all of the settings when we go over here into the software. Now, the standard settings we have in the software are probably close, but we'll need some dialing in for your particular vehicle. So the first thing we have here is the cut range and the end RPM. Now these settings all do have some information on them on the right hand side of the software here. They tell you a little bit about what each setting does. So the end RPM is simply like, the, like your launch RPM, except for you have to take into consideration this cut range. So basically what happens here is we're going to set our end RPM to 5,000 RPM. So when we're on the two step, the engine will not rev beyond 5,000 RPM. In fact, we have like a soft cut rev limiter happening. 1000 RPM below our end RPM here, the ECU actually start cutting cylinders one at a time. So in this case at 4000 RPM we would lose one cylinder. If it was a four cylinder engine then 250 RPM later we'd cut a second cylinder and so on and so forth. Obviously with our minimum temperature and our minimum TPS settings these both conditions need to be met before the two step gets activated. Uh, we have a maximum road speed which allows the two-step to actually stay engaged whilst the vehicle first launches. And we have this slew rate. We'll talk a little bit about the slew rate later, but let's actually get into the setting of the maps. We also want positive advance numbers when we're off the throttle. This is going to prevent the two-step from affecting the engine running under conditions that are not actually on the two-step. Now, minus 27 degrees of ignition timing, that's a lot. Typically, on a, on a methanol drag car, we don't need that much retard. So I would say where we really want to build a lot to boost here, we might have minus 8 degrees, maybe minus 10 degrees, um, a little bit less at lower RPM. Because at lower RPM, we actually need to try and increase the engine speed. We have less retard. So I'm going to put this at, say, minus two. And what we can do, because we have a 3D map here, is we can actually set up the two steps so that we have a bit of control over how much boost we make. We do this by saying at lower throttle positions, we can have less timing retard. The less retard we have to a point, the less boost we make. So we can actually modulate how much boost we're getting with our foot on the throttle when we're actually at the line. So I'll just make this zero. So of course I use I can use the Haltech linearized key in both directions, which will smooth out that entire map for me. And this is probably a pretty good starting point for the ignition. Of course, every engine is going to be different, so you might need more ignition retard, less ignition retard. It's completely dependent on the engine setup, the turbo size, the fuel injector size, all those sorts of things. But again, this is probably a pretty good start. Now in the fuel map here, again, it's not very high resolution. What I want to do is I want to actually expand it like I did the ignition timing map. In fact, what I can do is I can go back to this ignition timing map. I press F3 again, and the, the values that I put into the RPM and the load cells, I can actually save that axis. So I go up here, click on the Save button. I give it a name. I might call it two-step RPM 
save that axis, this one here, save that as two-step TPS, save that, click OK. Now when I go down to the fuel enrichment, press F3, and I can load that axis, all those values straight in. Find those axes, two-step RPM, and again, load two-step TPS. And there you go. So that's how we set it up in the software. Let's check out how the engine responds to that. Joe, let it rip. That's all we have time for on Technically Speaking this time around. I'm Matt from Haltech and I'll see you next time.